Replenish me. When I say that, what comes up for you? And when's the last time that you've done that? And where do you feel that in your body? Well, this is my invitation to you to explore the four steps of my Replenish Me program where women learn how to release, restructure, refresh, and rebirth. Showing up in the world being true to yourself. Only choosing words that honor your values and only allowing behaviors and people in your life who do the same. Connect with me by reaching out at bit.ly forward slash replenish with love and explore replenish me. And now for tonight's show. I'm so excited to have one of America's leading ladies, um, my, one of my co-authors, Anita Hawkins today. Um, you know, it's funny because when I was doing that YouTube series on America's leading ladies, we kept missing each other, you know, it's like life right. happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now, you know, finally the book's been out, I guess about a year already. And uh, I finally get you on my podcast. But before I let you, you know, really tell us who you are and your mission and all that in life, I'm going to just let my listeners and viewers know a little bit about who you are and what you're up to in the world. So for those of you who don't know, and I think everybody does know that Anita Hawkins is a model and clearly an author, but her main passion is as a philanthropist and an entrepreneur extraordinaire. And she just does so many things <clears throat> in her community and other communities to uplift women. You know, she came from um, a, a really, you know, her, she'll tell your, her story in a little bit, but, you know, to, to come from the, the situation of being a teen mother and then, you know, just finding herself and finding her way and then ending up marrying a major league um, baseball player and, and just, um, you know, just being elevated through her faith. Um, she's just an amazing woman. And, and that's why I want her to tell you who she is and what she's up to in the world, because I don't really think there's any amount of, you know, bio that could really say who you are. So I just I have a lot of respect for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm, I'm glad that we finally made it to this point because, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. When are we going to get on? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad that we finally connected. So connection is important for me. Uh, and that was actually one of my things was connecting and making the necessary connections in 2020 because I've been so accustomed to doing things solo and God made us the people around so relationships and connections are important. I don't think that people understand the capacity and the power that there are in connectivity. So that's important for me, um, for, for me this year and actually bringing that into fruition. So yes, I am glad that I'm finally here with you. <laughs> Beautiful. So can you just um, share with us a little bit about your story and how you came to be who you are today? Um, as of today, I, I will say, I, I remember I used to say a number of things of who I am, but I will say I am, I come from brokenness to now breaking ground. So um, to come from brokenness, uh, from childhood molestation, I was raped and molested in my home for a number of years. And I didn't come from a, you know, I didn't have a single mom or a single dad. My parents were married. So there were things that were, that was going on in my household that my parents were just truly unaware of, and I didn't know how to speak up. And for a number of years, um, nobody knew anything. And I, my grandmother always said that there was something wrong with me. When she took a picture of me, we were on the train. And I think that being with my grandmother was my sanctuary. So those weekends and all of the time that I spent with her traveling the world, I said, it's amazing how you can have a two-part life. There's things going on at home and then you leave for the weekend and you have these amazing experiences and then you go back home to a, a, a just total dysfunction. Yeah. And, um, 
she introduced me to so many different things. And I remember her showing my dad a picture of me. And she said, a picture is worth a thousand words. And that was my first time hearing that. And she said, there's something going on in that little girl. And she said, I don't know what it is, but there's something going on. But nobody, you know, ever paid it any attention. But my grandmother made sure that she kept me grounded. She kept me involved. Um, that was my foundation for Christianity. That was um, my sanity. She gave me my smile. She gave me my why, my purpose. That is why I am who I am when it comes to philanthropy. That was my first time being introduced as a little girl. I was a candy striper. Um, I worked at nursing homes with my grandmother. I worked at the church. There were so many things that she had me involved in. Um, I was inducted into the NAACP when I was five. So there were so wow. many things. Oh, yeah, she was, my grandmother was the socialite. So she was the, the woman to know in the, in the city. So um, I, I, I literally attribute so many things to my grandmother. I remember my aunt telling me, you're just like her. And I said, no, I'm not. And she said, think about everything that you do. You're exactly like her. You're a replica mm -hmm. of your grandmother. And I had to sit back and I said, you know what? I guess I am. <laughs> um, but again, I just do to thank her and the legacy that she left for me to carry on. And you know, when they have the, the saying about passing the baton, I feel as though I have literally carried that baton and done everything that she could ever imagine. So that that just warms my heart. It gives me chills. It puts a smile on my face. And and I when people see me smile, they say, "Oh my God!" When you smile and you talk about her, your eye it's in your eyes. It's everywhere. Like I see it, I feel it. So it feels good to be able to not walk in the things of the past that I went through, but to be able to teach other people um, to be free, to relinquish yourself from bondage, from shame, to walk in confidence and boldness and not allow the opinions of others to stop you in your tracks from doing what you were doing. And that's what I did for a number of years. I walked in shame from my past and I really didn't know how to even talk about it. When I was told in 2011 um, that a book was going to be birthed from my belly, I didn't know what that meant. And that was Lisa Nichols. And I didn't even know who she was at the time when she grabbed me in the restroom, the entire restroom was on pause. <laughs> and she just grabbed my hands. And I'm like, if this woman only knew what just happened yesterday, how did she know to come to me and say this today? And I was, I was in a ball of tears. And my girlfriend said, who was that lady? I was like, I don't know, I don't know. But she stood in the restroom and poured into me in the bathroom. Can you imagine that? And we were at, we were at Essence Fest. I chased her out the, the bathroom and I ran up behind her and I'm asking her, so I'm like, who is that lady with that fire red hair? Who is she? Oh, that's Lisa Nichols. I'm like, okay, Google, <laughs> Google who's Lisa Nichols. <laughs> so it was the secret and chicken soup for the soul. And I'm, I'm like, oh my God, this woman's amazing. I said, I'm not going to let her out of my sight. And she invited me to um, her event that she had in San Diego in September, 2011. It was called Manifesting Love and Money. That was my first time investing in me. And that's what I want to push to women. You have a lot of women that are illiterate to things of the world. So it's important to become literate of everything that's going on. Don't, don't think because you know that you think that you're know-it-all or you have it all together that you can't be, you're forever a student. I've always tell it, I am, if I, I'm a forever student. I'm always learning. There's always something out there that you can learn. There's something that you can obtain. You need to be a sponge, always soaking up. So there was so much information that I got in that weekend. I was just like, oh my God, when I get home, I'm going to do this. I have, I've, I've made my list. I had a five-year goal of all the things that I wanted to see. And I did everything in three. Wow. I said, really? I said, I want to write my first book. I want to be on the cover of a magazine. I want to open up a restaurant. I want my network to be X, Y, and Z. And everything that I wanted, I obtained in three years versus five. So when you say, write it down, make it plain, I believe it. I receive it. I know, I know that it is true. I walk in it. And I know it's real. You can become whatever you want 
to become if you just write it write it down and make it plain write it down and make it plain it's just that simple and a lot of people don't believe that how important it is to see it to make those vision boards because i didn't I didn't know anything about a vision board. So making those vision boards and doing all of those things and saying, you know what, this is my season. I'm present. I can do it. There's nothing that I can accomplish and I'm ready. So I thank God for allowing me to let go of my past and walk into my future and my present to share all of those things, not from an oh, woe is me point of view or standpoint, but to say, you know what, this is what I came through. This is where I am today. It happened. Now it's time to get past it. Let it go. Stop pacifying it. Stop um, peeling that scab back. Allow it to heal because there is a process. It's a healing process. You talk about it. And if there are times you're going to, you're going to have tears, but you talk about it enough. You share it enough. You, you know what? I went through that. Look at where I am today. It happened. I'm over it. My daughter didn't want to read my book. My daughter was one of the people. Uh, my daughter was one of the people that didn't want to read my book because someone told her not to read it. And I said, "Well, why wouldn't you read it?" And she looked at the synopsis and she said, "Well, Mom, you went through so much." I said, "But I'm here. Fine. I'm good." So it's okay. Things happen. Those th those people that that played a small, a, just a, a small. That that's not the finished product. I'm still here. I'm still working. I'm still accomplishing things. I'm not dead. I'm okay. So believe me when I say that I'm okay. I'm okay. So that is that is who I am. Is is. My daughter looks at me now and she says, "Mom, I wish I could forgive like you do," and I say, "You can." It, it takes work, but you can. But I just believe that, again, my grandmother set a foundation for me of what it is to have agape love. God loves us in spite of, and that's how we should love other people. You have to forgive. You have to love as hard as it may be, as hard as it may seem. It's doable. Oof. Let me just, like, kind of lean into that for a minute. That's That's, like, some like golden nuggets per second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean you're right. You know, God does love us um just the way that is almost humanly impossible. So I'm I'm sure that your daughter was just like I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to do that, but clearly she can because it's in her genes. <laughs> and you know the other things, I want to pull out a couple of things that you said. First of all, Lisa Nichols will do that to you. I met her in 2018, and she does just grab you and tell you, like, speak life into you, you know? And so that's amazing. Sometimes we need someone like that, you know, to, to pull it out of us because we know it's there, but we don't allow it to come out. And when someone, in your case, you know, who doesn't even know you and you didn't even know who she was, you know, you're able to receive it better than you probably could have received from your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a total stranger. It's a total stranger. That's why we need coaches, you know? Um, the other thing you said is the vision board and the importance of writing down our vision. Um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I, I have to say for myself, same thing. When I write it down, it does really happen. When I think about it, it's just a thought, like a dream, you know? Right, right. And, um, and then the last thing is that you came from something that you are no longer because you allowed the healing to happen. So, ah, thank you, Anita. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And, and you know, we're going to come back in just a minute. We're going to take a little bit of a break. And then... Okay. I want to dive into um, what you said about uh, your vision for 2020 and some of your upcoming projects. Okay. okay. All right.
we're back. So I like what you said about um, your plan on collaborating more in 2020 instead of, you know, being out there solo. So, you know, are there any particular projects that you're working on that you want to share? Yes, I have a, a new book. It's a self-help book. And I don't know if I can say this without it, without it sounding, um, I don't know. Um, people are going to look at it as a curse word, but it's not. It's an acronym. Okay. It, it's, spelled, it's spelled out S-H-Y-T. Okay. So the book is called Owning My Shit. Okay. But the acronym is the S is say is um my um my your your self awareness. These are the things that we have to own. You have to you have to own your and you think of anything, any any just think of all the things that, that we go through when you say i'm not owning it you have to own who you are you have to own your stuff you do you have to own your stuff you have to own if you're negligent if you're irresponsible if you're uh combative if you don't love if you don't forgive if you're not walking in healing if you're not saying yes to what god has for you if you're not allowing yourself to let go so this is what the breakdown of this book is about is about decluttering is about recognizing there's some things in my past that um that I didn't know about I didn't know what stress was I didn't know what stress or depression was until that was a word in my in my family that was never used we I had never heard growing up I never heard stress and I never heard depression wow. and I actually birthed my daughter through depression I birthed my daughter in 2001 and I didn't know that I was depressed in birthing her until she was 13 I had no idea. Wow. So owning all of those things that go on and, and then figuring out how to reprogram and retrain our mindset. How do you get past all of these things if you're not reprogramming and retraining? And then, uh, and then accepting things and letting go and being present, <laughs> being present in your season. And, and I, I was speaking of, I actually have a video that I need to post. I had a speaking engagement and this was the, the literally the quickest presentation I'd ever done ever. Mm -hmm. It was 12 minutes. It was really quick. They had a lot of different people they had to speak and I had a flight to catch. And the first thing that I said to the women is I am present in my season, whether you're in season or out of season, when people say, Oh girl, how are you doing? And people really don't care or they're just being nosy. <laughs> and it's okay because people are, we're nosy. If we weren't nosy, there would be no Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of these social media outlets because we want to know we're nosy. We sometimes we live, most of us live vicariously through other people. I realized that in traveling, I love to travel. That is my release. That's my peace. That's what I love to do. And I know there was a time that I wasn't posting and I was getting inbox from, inboxes from people saying, where have you been? I haven't seen you. I live through you. I live vicariously through you. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> and I had my friends. I literally had people that I knew that were saying, you're doing too much or you're posting too much. And I listened to them and I stopped posting. But all of the perfect strangers that love to follow me, whether they're, you know, friends or fans or you know, what have you, or just followers, and they say, Anita, we love you, post, where have you been, we need to see what you're doing, so it's important to be present in or out of season, and everybody doesn't have to know your business, everybody doesn't have to know everything that's going on with you, um, it's just so important that we love ourselves no matter what, we don't get sucked up or too overly consumed with our stuff, and it's stuff that, and it's not that serious. So it's a lot of small things. And I was in prayer. I was in prayer the other day. And that's one of the, another things, another thing in my life that I know that God is calling me to do. I was in, uh, in ministry school and everybody keeps saying, Anita, you're called, you're called, you're called. And God had me in prayer the other day. He had me pray for 11 people. And the message that was out there was, 
praying for their health, praying for, praying for their children, praying for those that um, are out of jobs right now because I know that they're stressed and saying, okay, well, how am I going to pay my bills? Everything is going, I don't care. And, and it was, and my prayer was, I don't care if you have to go and live with someone else, be okay with that. Don't sit and say, I'm so stressed out that I can't function from day to day. If I have to open up my doors, that's what I have to do. If God says, open up your doors for a friend to come and live with you in this time, in this season, we're going to be present in that season and we're going to be okay with it. So it's just things that we have to let go and we worry. We are worry warts. We worry ourselves. And I, and I told my friend earlier today, I said, listen, I said, all of the things that we go through psychologically, mentally, it trickles down into our physical. We are spiritual beings. So if we're taking in all of this stuff from every day, we have to, we got to let go. We got to release some stuff. When you go and get a massage, when you go and get a massage and they're, they're detoxing and they're pulling out those knots, what do they tell you? Drink some water so we can flush out all those toxins. There's things that we have to declutter, just like if you have a work desk, same thing. You can't be at peace with all this stuff because you really can't find anything. It's cluttered. Our minds have to be decluttered. Our space needs to be decluttered. Every The people have to be decluttered. Same thing. We got to get some people out of there. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> get some declutter folks out your life. I'm telling you, because people bring on a lot of stress. The things that we put in, what you put out is what you put in. That was my slogan when I had my cafe. I had a big, long rug. As soon as you walk in through the door, you put out what you put in. Mm. everything that we take in spiritually everything that we take in physically everything that we take into our mouths into our bellies if we take in junk we're going to put out junk if people are spewing negative things into our ears nine times out of ten you're going to speak it or you're going to walk differently because of what someone said if someone is speaking constant negativity into your life sometimes it, it's it's easier said than done to block things out but it's another thing to say, you know what? I'm going to stop you in your tracks. I rebuke every word that you said. I'm not receiving it. And I need you to go on about your business. That's sometimes what we have to do. And we need to retrain our, our, our thought patterns or on the energy that we put out, knowing the type of people that we're going to pull into our lives. So those are some things that I want to talk about and things that God has called me to do. And I'm going to stop running from it. I, it, it's time, it's time for me to be more open and recognize that people want to hear and stop listening to all of those naysayers and people that really don't know me. And that's something else that I want to educate people on when people say, oh, I know her. Oh, I know her. No, you don't know me. You haven't seen me since high school graduation. Do you know how old I am now? My son is 27. My daughter's 18. So you don't know me anymore. You know of me. You know the old Anita. Get to know me for who I am now. If you get to know me for who I am now, you'll understand that I walk in a totally different light. I'm a totally different individual and God has something in store for me and he may have something in store for you. So while you're walking in darkness, be careful, be careful that you're, when, when you're walking in those, in that darkness, I know in my dark places, that's when I get closer to God. That's in my day. And I, I told somebody this other day, I said, I know that my darkest place and my darkest times in my life that that is when I had tripped over my miracle in those darkest times because I bring God in. I don't allow all of that negative stuff. And people, girl, you need to do this or you need to do that. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm not hearing you. I'm listening to God. I'm taking this time to myself and saying, you know what? I need God in my life. I need him and I believe it. And I know that he has something in store for me, something greater that this is not it. This is not the end. I'm not accepting it. I say, hey, I'm going to let it be. Let, let it be let it be what it is. And then I'm going to wait. People of the Bible waited. We're, we're the, the, the society that we're in today. We want everything instant, instantaneously. We're a microwave generation. And I say, and I say this all the time. I want to be slow cooked. Put me in a slow cook. Put me in a crock pot. <laughs> I want to simmer just a little while. <laughs> and you know, the flavors that seem better, you know, so I say, you know what? I said, the people of the Bible waited. Moses waited. Abraham waited. You can go down the list of people that waited we are, we are genetically programmed to wait but society and the world has changed us that changed the dynamic drastically so it's important that we wait and i and i have been i've waited on god and god is god is showing up and showing out he is wow you know this is so true and and i i want to go back to something you said and i don't and i don't know that anyone really picks up on this 
but this is a very important point and it directly relates to how you ended what you just said. Our emotions are the limbo land between our spiritual self and our physical self. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, um, women experience sometimes depression in pregnancy and postpartum depression because, you know, that is a really a spiritual experience. You're carrying another human being and their spirit is being put into them you know, once they get to a certain level of development. So you're not only dealing with your spirit, you're dealing with a new spirit, right? right. And that's yeah. a lot of responsibility. And um, whether or not we realize it in our physical self, our spiritual self recognize that responsibility, you know? Oh, and, yeah. And it's just like the <clears throat> lack of care surrounding um, taking care of pregnant women in this country, especially women of color, is appalling, you know? And, you know, the way that women are taught to disconnect from their bodies during pregnancy, like, oh, it's going to be too painful. You should just get a C-section. A C-section is like a major surgery. Yeah, yeah. And there's something really important about the mother and child helping each other, helping that person come into the world, right? Because the contractions are that child saying, I'm ready to come. Yeah. And then the mother responds by pushing. But that conversation can't happen if you, if you get cut. Right. I mean, obviously, I'm not talking about emergency situations. I'm talking about we're at a 50% selective, right? And sometimes yeah. doctor-directed. Uh, C-section rate. So, you know, that's, and that does lead to some other mental, physical, and emotional things. You know, I'm not saying that that was your situation, but I wanted to bring that to light because a lot of women don't realize that. And a lot of our emotions are centered around our wound healing, right? And we, have, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's so much power and divinity in our wound. So, you know, I'm not surprised because of your journey that you're called to be a minister. <laughs> because like, besides the fact that God had your grandmother there to hold, you know, hold space for you, right? Yes. Give you some yes. sanctuary. Yes. Through, you know, the trauma that you didn't know how to express, right? Yes, and definitely. here you are now, like, um, just helping other women as part of your healing, you know? And, um, and I'm, and I'm saying that because I feel like as we evolve, we always pull out more layers of who we are. And, you know, we, we, as long as you're alive, you're still <laughs> becoming right. Let like, that's what oh, we're, yeah. we're, still, we're still doing. We're still becoming, we're still evolving. Yeah. 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 So, but I'm we're just waiting for the the good stuff to come out. I was having a conversation earlier and you know people always talking about pulling back the layers of who they are. I'm a pomegranate. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because like when you open a pomegranate, right? Yeah. You you know it's like you think it's done and then you pull back one it's like oh my gosh there's more goodness in there there's more goodness yeah yeah <laughs> La look layers upon layers <laughs> not it's not just a banana now i don't want to just be the banana mm. i need a whole lot of stuff popping out <laughs> <laughs> layers of all that juiciness <laughs> oh women need
so what kind of events are you going to have? Like, um, and how are you promoting the book? What's your plan? Well, um, first of all, I think like I spoke with you about putting, putting it out there and wanting it out there because I want it to be more of a movement. Mm -hmm. I have t-shirts and you know, everything. So I want, um, I want women to stand up and be proud about owning and not just women, men too. And, uh, I was speaking, I actually have a video that I, I have to post. I have to share because working, uh, with women and men that are victims of domestic violence, you hear about the me too, me too movement and here you hear so many women that are going through, but there are men that are going through as well. There are men that have been raped and molested as little boys. And these boys grow into men. So you have men that are being abused by, by their wives. I've seen it. I've, they've, I've seen it, don't seen it or had the, the man call in and you hear the woman in the background, the police aren't going to believe you because when they get here, they're going to know that you did this. And he's recording, thankfully or prayerfully, he was smart enough to record everything. But there are men every day that walk in shame of being abused by their wives. Mm -hmm. men that are not talking about the abuse that they endured endured as children so just like there are women out there there are men as well mm -hmm. so that's something that we need to bring awareness to as well so owning all of that and being proud and and relinquishing the I'm telling you when people don't understand what it feels like to release the shackles because we have our we have ourselves in self-bondage yeah Self-bondage is a place that it's hard. It's hard to be in, and it's a lonely place. Mm -hmm. When you realize and recognize that there are so many, so many more people in lives that identify, identify with you more ever or care to imagine, you'll speak more. You'll be more vocal. You'll be more willing to share because you don't feel alone. You'll say, oh, my God, he's just like me, or she's just, you went through that too? Oh, my goodness, I didn't know. So there are so many people that go through with everybody, everybody shies away from talking and they don't want to share, but why not? You have the experience for a reason. There's, there is purpose in your pain. You have to be able to talk about it. You have to be able to share. And I know everybody isn't ready to do that. But again, if you don't go to these uh, conferences, if you're not exposing yourself, if you're not exploring, if you're not making those connections if you're not networking if someone is not taking you by the hand and say you need to come with me you need to be a part of this it's something that people need to talk about more and being willing even if I have to say and I go to events all the time and I will sponsor a woman or man anytime I go to some out you know what even if I can't be in attendance I'm going to sponsor three women or I'll you know whoever here's three tickets just so they can be in the room because everyone can't afford that but if I can afford for someone else to do it, I do it all the time. And I don't mind doing it because I know that there are so many people that are hurting. There are so many people that are hurting and it's a, it's a tough headspace to be in. But when you, again, when you're able to look into the eyes of other individuals and you're like, man, all this time I've been by myself. It feels good to be in a room with some, some other people that are just like me and people that understand what you've endured. Yeah. And you know, this is why um, I've decided to, um, for me, I want to have my events quarterly because what I noticed is like, like you said, some people, first of all, they don't understand what's going on. There's certain vocabulary that they're not familiar with, you know, like stress or depression. Oh, that doesn't happen to me or that never happened to anybody in my family. Right. And, and just as miserable and don't know why, and don't even recognize that they're miserable, but, you know, so they won't hire like a coach or somebody to help them or go to a therapist, but they'll want to go to an event, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 So people don't, I, I don't think that people even talk about it enough after you go to an event. Yeah, I'm yeah. the first one to call my friends and say, girl, you missed it. I told you should have been in that room. I got a message for you and I'll give the message. Even when I go to church, same thing. I say, girl, you missed the message today. Let me call you with the word. I took, took my little footnotes. I'm going to break it all down to you. They say, oh, girl, you, that was a good one. I say, yeah, I told you should have been in there. You know, so <laughs> be in the number, be in the room. It's okay. Like it's, 
make the investment. That investment goes such a long way. If that was in 2011, and I'm still talking about it in 2020. So we know it's major, you know. So, and that was just the first one, but I'm still talking about the, the impact of the first one. I've been to so many more after that one, but that one was major. It was major. It totally changed my life. It changed my way of thinking. It changed, it changed the way that I moved. It changed uh, even, even talking about finances and, um, and love and expectations. I, it, it, changed, it changed my life. And people don't get it. I'm like, y'all don't understand. When I went to see Lisa again this past year and I stood up in the room and I said, y'all, I didn't get paid for this. This is not an advertisement. This is real. So if you're in this room, you need to invest in yourself. I said, I'm telling y'all what it did for me. I said, and I gave the rundown of everything that I said I wanted to do, and I did it. I said, so this is real. It's it's not it's not fake. I said, this I, where this woman came from was she dropped out of the heavens, but she's from a whole nother you know a whole nother level that y'all need to try and get on. But it's important that we have people pouring into us, and again, being able to soak it all up and say, I mean. I can do this. I can do it. And and really walk in it and knowing, you know what, I can do this and then I can do it for somebody else and then that somebody else can help somebody else. And it's a chain reaction. It should be a domino effect. Everything that we do shouldn't be negative. You got to find some positivity in the world. Right now, the same thing, positivity, praying. I can pray for you. I can give you a word. I can give you a ride. I can give you some food. I can give you some, some knowledge. Whatever it is that I have, if I can offer it to you, I'm here. I'm an open book. I'm ready to share. So that's what we don't do enough of. We don't share enough. So, you know, another thing that I'm hearing you say is that at some point we have to stop doing what's expected and accepted. So what was that defining moment for you? I'm pretty sure it came after May, I don't know, tell me, tell me when, was it like after you uh, achieved the vision board um, things or when was that for you? Well, when I was at the event, I left there, I wrote everything down, everything that I wanted to do, everything that I wanted to see. The day I got home, the very next day, I made all the necessary changes. I didn't wait. Oh, wow. I didn't put it on hold. I did everything the very next day. I made phone calls. Um, I, I made movements. And that's what putting those things into motion. Because you know how we write stuff down and say, okay, I'll, I'll get to it. Oh, I'll do that next week. No, I went home and I pulled out all my credit cards. And I actually did a video. I did a video about this. Um, uh, what was that? Women's inter Women's Month last year. Women's Month last year. Mm -hmm. I did a video. It's on. It's on YouTube. Is it on your YouTube channel? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, but I posted on Facebook. I, I can share it with. I can share the the link okay. with you. But I talked about how I started pouring into women, and I give I give shoes away every year. Mm -hmm. I give I give shoes away. So I've given over 175 pairs of shoes away. Brand new shoes. But I talked about how it started. I said for a whole year, I wanted to make a sacrifice. I said for a year, I want to see how much money I can save. Again, this event was about manifesting love and money. Not just love, but money. So how do you manifest love? How do you reinvest in yourself? So I said, okay, I'm going to make a sacrifice of everything. This is what Lisa instructed us to do. She said, everything that you even thought that you would spend whether you're window shopping, internet shopping, whatever kind of shopping you do, if you knew that you were going to go in there and buy a piece of clothing, a pair of shoes, a bag, write yourself a check cash. I wrote myself a check cash. I had a, an account that was set aside as cash. That's it. So all of the money that I thought I was going to spend. And I said, I'm not going to purchase anything over $49.99. Wow. That's including tax. This was the sacrifice that I made for a whole year. Okay. And I saved myself $60,000. Wow. $60,000. That's amazing. And I, it's, it's on the video. And I've talked about it because I was saying, okay, now I have all these shoes because I set up an account. You know, they have all these different shoe, shoe uh, companies where you can go and get shoes for $39.99. So this is how 
I made sure that I stayed on task of not spending more than forty nine ninety nine because the ship the shipping was free and everything was free. Right. So I had all of these shoes after that year, and I said, "Oh my God, I have all these shoes. What am I going to do with these shoes?" So I started blessing people with shoes. Okay. And that's how it all started. So I saved sixty thousand dollars, and I've been blessing women with shoes ever since. Nice. Oh, yeah. that's so good. Yeah. That is, that's a great money saving tip too. <laughs> yeah, right. So I got home and I cut up all of my credit cards. I said, okay, I don't need that card. I'm not using that card. I don't need that card. I'm going to use one credit card, you know, and this is what I'm going to spend if I see anything. And I put myself on an allowance. It was the whole night. It was very, everything was very strategic and I stayed on task and I saved $60,000 in one year. Wow. Just on stuff. And just think about the, I think about all the fast food when I see the Chick-fil-A lines and McDonald's and all these lines and the money, even what people spend on everyday habits, whether you smoke cigarettes and things like that, it's cigarettes cost like $10 a pack now. Oh, really? It's crazy. I said, if y'all can afford, (laughs) you can afford to save for travel. You can afford to expose your children. You can, that's a, that's college. Yeah. Like, that, that's books that's 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 taxes that's a car note insurance There's a lot of other things you can do besides cigarettes wow so when you think about the habits of things that we do every day and it's just stuff it's just stuff <laughs> it's like, yeah. and that's something that you can have long term stuff doesn't <laughs> last forever Anita, that's the thing. You can see the stuff, right? But we can't see the change that happens in us, right? So I know like to invest in Lisa Nichols, I mean, her events are at least like, well, not events, but like her retreats and weekends are at least like $10,000. And you don't see where that $10,000 went, but you can definitely feel it and you're definitely a different person. And I think Like, how do you help people with that mindset? It's like, you know, it is, I feel like emotional transformation is tangible. Yeah. But not in the way that you see with your eyes. It's in the way, like, we believe in God, right? That's Mm -hmm. tangible. So it's like that. Well, back then in 2011, it wasn't that expensive. And I was able to bring somebody else for free. So it was a two for one. So <laughs> okay. it was actually, it was actually like maybe $2,000 for a whole weekend. You can't beat that. So I wow. think now her webinars are cheaper <laughs> <laughs> than spending the money on a weekend with Lisa Nichols. Uh, but it's worth, I'm, it's, it's worth the investment. And there's so, but there's so many other powerful um, speakers and motivators and, even just picking up a book, they're like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what more I can say other than social media is not the answer. It's not the tell all, win all, be all. Pick up a book, do a webinar. I, I can go down the list, even if it's a a, a, a Bill Winston, <laughs> a, a, a Bill, a Cindy Trim. I just, there's so many different powerful people that are given so many just nuggets of things that you can use in everyday life and implementing them. I did the Fort Cindy Trims 40 Day Soul Fast. I've done it three times because I wanted my friends to do it. And they said, well, I'm not going to be able to do it. Okay, I got you. I'm I'm your accountability partner. Having someone to hold you accountable. Having someone to say, I mean, all of your your greatest leaders, all of the people that we look up to, please know that they have even greater advisors. Yeah. Someone is there holding their hand. Someone is there um, covering them. Someone is there answering those questions, those late night, you know, thoughts that they have. And what what am I supposed to do if they're puzzled? If they don't know, hey, well, well, what what should my next step be? I need to pray about it first. I need to think about it first. I need to taste my words before I spit them out. All of those things are so important and people don't do that, but it's like, okay, they have accountability partners. Please believe they're not doing it on their own. They have mentors. Someone is there guiding and leading them along the way. It's impossible to be great without 
someone there. I said, I, the day still goes on. The sun, look, the sun is going to rise and set. And the moon is going to come out and the stars and everything else is just going to keep going. And you're going to be sitting there in your feelings. Get over yourself and keep it moving. But you Hello? know, <laughs> I hear a couple of things in what you said. First of all, like, it's really important to be selective of who are the people in your inner circle. Oh, yeah. So that you have, you know, um, fresh eyes on what's happening with you. And then the next thing I'm hearing, and this is super important because a lot of women misuse their anger, right? Anger, I yeah. strongly feel is a wisdom. But when you put that pause button on and you call your girlfriend and you're just like, am I wrong? <laughs> you know, like think about it for a minute because you get angry for a reason, but you got to find out the purpose behind that anger and how to walk in the wisdom and not be reactive. So yeah. that, that's the other thing I'm hearing you say. And that's like really powerful because I mean, um, yeah, women, I think we, it's our, it's our emotions that are the power, but we don't really allow that power to come out. We just, uh, we take a little bit of it and run the wrong direction. Yeah. But if we, yeah. if we like lean into it with the pause button, talk mm -hmm. to the, the right person, the right person, not any old girlfriend. Not any old, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And pull out the wisdom. And then yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to have those people in your lives. Um, again, that are knowledgeable, that have some done did it. It's just like when I'm talking to someone that's married or, or talking to someone that um, has gone through some things in their marriage. I can, I can give information or valid information because I've been through it. I want to talk to some people that have some done did it. been there, done that. If you've never been married, well, why would I talk? Why would I have that conversation with you? You don't, you have no idea what it's like to be married because the first thing, oh, I'm not going to put up with that. You haven't, you don't know. You've never been married. You've never been, you've never had soul ties to anyone. You've never made a commitment. You've never went down the aisle and said, you know what, for better, for worse and sickness and in health and, you know, sickness and, 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 you know, all you, 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 you don't know, you don't know what it's like. So don't say what you're not willing to do because there are a lot of things that we may be willing to do in some boundaries and things that we cross and it's like oh my god i can't believe that i'm i'm really doing this i'm really I'm, I'm i'm a different person you're not just dating your high school friend that you can walk away from it's not the same you have to sit down and have the conversations there are children involved there are families everybody is connected again there are soul ties and god it's a covenant it's not the same so if i'm going to have a conversation with someone i talk to people about um, about things that I went through in my marriage from verbal abuse, physical abuse, um, just abuse in general. I can talk about that because I've gone through it. I can talk about uh, depression because I've gone through it. I can talk about being a teen mom because I've seen it. I can talk about having an abortion because I went through it. I can, I have so many things that I can talk about because I've done it. I know what it looks like. So when I go to these teen mom group homes I can talk to them because I've walked in their shoes yeah. I can't go to corporate America and talk about anything because I don't I have no idea I have I haven't worked with the corporate job everything that I know has been off of my experience I don't have a cop everything that I've done I said from being a licensed builder and contractor that's something that I've learned to do from life experience, from being a franchise owner. I learned to do from life experience. And I said, I guess I do have a degree in life experience. Yes. So, <laughs> Amen. So, <laughs> the people that identify with Anita, and there are a lot of people that say, well, why do you do what you do? Why do you help women that have been victimized? Because this is what I've gone through. I know what it looks like. I know what that little girl looks like who's sitting with her head hung low. I know. She's, she's, been molested, she's been molested at home right now. I can see the difference in little girls and little boys because I remember looking the exact same way. I can look at women that look just like me. When women purchase my book, and then I always thank women for my first book that I released in 2014, uh, The Storm After the Storm. And I always give them my card. And I said, make sure to call me. And they said, no, that's not your number. I said, it is. I said, call me right now. <laughs> this is my number. 
And I say, call me so we can debrief. And literally, I've had women that call me, and we've been on the phone for two hours, debriefing on the book, chapter by chapter. Well, what were you going through? What was your headspace at that time? How did you feel? You know, I feel like I'm Airy, and I feel like my daughter is Kiki. And oh my God, you you taught me how to master my storms. And and that's and that's what it's about, mastering your storms. Because there's peaks and there's valleys, there's highs and lows. Like we have to figure out how do we get out of that storm unscathed? How do we walk and say, you know what? This is, you know, I want someone to say, Oh, you ain't been through nothing. Girl, you only knew the half. <laughs> if you only knew to have no I don't look what I've been look look like what I've been through and I don't want to look like that I don't want to to bear those scars I want those things are internal but on the exterior I want to walk with my head high I want to have a smile on my face I want to greet you I want to walk into a room and bring joy and peace and hug women and they feel oh my god great energy it feels good it feels good to exude that I don't want to walk around like but Anita you can't really do that I mean let's be honest I mean you have a beautiful smile but you, it's because it's genuine and I just want to say that because you know a lot of times we do smile but it's a mask you know yeah. and and I have to just throw this one in here too because more than likely you don't have external scars because of the goodness inside a lot of times we, those scars, like, you know, God's kind to us for a little while, but then yeah. eventually <laughs> if we're not handling it well inside, it does show, right? Yeah, it, so, it does. Yeah. But that's where, but that's where forgiveness comes in at. That's, that's a part of the healing. If I'm walking around bitter, my mom was, my mom was one of those people. My mom was very bitter, very, very bitter. And I always say, I don't want to be like that. That's not, that's not pretty. That's, I've seen some beautiful, I've met some beautiful women that were so, when I say phenomenally beautiful on the exterior, but their interior made their exterior so I said, you're not pretty, you're ugly. You're not a pretty person. You're so ugly. You're ugly because of how you carry yourself. You're ugly because of how you treat people. I don't know what you've gone through, but there's some layers that you need to sit and you need to peel back and deal with because you're not exuding the likeness of God. I want to exude God. I, when people see me, I want to be people to say, you know what? I see God in her. I, I, I want that. I, I, when I say, I, I, I want that so bad. And I know I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. But when people see me, I want, I want people to see love. I want to see the likeness of God. When I look in the mirror every day, I want to say, I check my post and I know that I'm alive. And I thank you, Lord, for covering me through the, through, through everything, everything that I've endured trials and tribulation into triumph it feels wonderful i'm so grateful for everything that god has given me i'm, I'm just grateful i it, when i just thinking about it right now I, I can just ball into tears because there are so many people that walk the earth that are so ungrateful and it's so important to be grateful because my life can just it could be so different it could be so different yeah wow that's, that's so powerful. Thank, thank you so much, Anita, for, you know, sharing those golden nuggets, those diamonds, I'm gonna just call them diamonds. And, um, and you know, for, for spending time with us today, let me know, like, how can women get in touch with you? Where can they get your book, your new book, and all those things? Yeah. Um, my book is, well, you can get in touch with me at findonereasontosmile at gmail.com. And I'm on Instagram as AEH Fashion. Um, Facebook, Anita Hawkins. Um, what else? My book, The Storm After the Storm, is on Amazon. And it's also on my website. So it's The Storm After the Storm. And it's under my name, Anita E. Hawkins. Um, what else? My new book has not released yet, but I also have another book that's on my website. It's called The Breakthrough. And my chapter is The Power of the Ask. And mm -hmm. this is something that I've never talked about. So the power, how much power it is in asking. Oh my goodness. That's a whole nother topic of discussion. But, <laughs> wow. but um, it's, yeah, so much power in that. And I didn't realize that until last year, but I'm thankful that I was able to be a part of that book, but it's called The Breakthrough. And that is, um, 
compilation of story around Johnny Wimbry, a lot of uh, other powerful authors, uh, writers. Um, so uh, that is on my website at AnitaEHawkins.com, AnitaEHawkins.com. Okay, great. And I'll make sure that all those links are underneath the video. So this will be on YouTube and um, with, the, with the podcast. Okay. So I, I want to ask you one last question that is kind of current events. Um, mm -hmm. So what would you, like, what's your advice for people that are struggling with their mindset right now and maybe a whole life restructuring surrounding the, the COVID-19? For me, is is for me, it's prayer to not walk in fear. A lot of us get um, entangled with the hype of everything around the media. There are more people that have died from 1918 to 2020 from, from influenza. Thirty thousand people died in three months from October of last year to February 2020 this year, over 30,000 people from influenza. So I ask people to research, to read, to pray, to change their diets, which is so important. And I think that people need to focus more on the things, again, that we put into our bodies is so important. Taking the <laughs> building of your immune system, the foods that we eat, Oh my goodness, that's that's what we need to do, a, a podcast on what people are intaking every single day in their in their bodies. We don't we don't take enough vitamins, we don't eat enough greens, we don't eat enough fibers. There's so many things that we don't do. They're putting all the emphasis on sanitizing your hands and washing your hands. Okay, we know we need to do that. But what about building the immune system to be able to fight off all of these viruses and you know, even the common cold? things that are going on. I said, we need to focus on what we're putting into our bodies, period, point blank. It's important that we, we build our immune system. We need to go back to what our ancestors did and, you know, having gardens in our backyards and having fresh fruits and vegetables. And so many children are saying, okay, well, I don't eat that or their parents, they don't eat that. Let them try it first. You don't know what they may eat or they don't eat it because we don't give it to them because okay. we don't eat it. Yeah, because the kids will do what we do, not what we say. Right. And so. also, I mean, like if kids see us, I mean, if, if it's a garden family project, they're going to want to taste it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So putting what you, you put out what you put in. So it's important that everything that we put into our bodies um, makes sense. It has to make sense everything that we put in and that and again with this um with this virus it's the same thing everything that we're putting in spiritually everything that we're putting into our mouths everything that everything that we do every single day matters it matters and nobody's putting any emphasis on that yeah yeah thank you for that so um one, I guess one more related question to that. So do you, would you say that your, your lane is more um, food as medicine or um, use herbs and food or like which way? Both. Do you okay. Both. I do essential oils. Okay. Um, I, when I, if I brought you into my home, that's the first thing that I give people. I give them essential oils. They come in, they have a headache. I have my peppermint oil if you have cancer you're suffering cancer you're taking frankincense and you're putting it in the roof of your mouth i have so many oils some oils i can't even pronounce but i know what they're used for <laughs> <laughs> i know i know what they're used for so um it's important herbs spices fresh fruits vegetables your diet everything we put into our our everyday body it matters yeah we need to do more of the all natural stuff. It's important that we get we get back to that, and we don't because we're a microwave generation. Everybody wants everything now. You want to hit hit a button and it's ready. You want to go through the drive through and pick it up. Nobody wants to cook cook a meal. Yeah, that's funny yeah. because um my yeah my nine year old she said I'm gonna plant these orange seeds 
to, so we can grow an orange uh, tree. So my five-year-old uh -huh. responds, she goes, oh, is it already growing? <laughs> <laughs> like she just went outside. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. No, it takes time. It says like when you sow a seed, you're sowing a seed, but you have to wait on the har harvest. Yeah. Again, the harvest, the people of the Bible waited. You have to wait on your harvest. It takes time. It takes time, but we want everything instantaneously and it does not work that way. Not for anything of substance. Anything of substance, you have to wait. And, and that's what my nine-year-old said. She goes, well, you know, just like it took you a long time to be the big girl that you are, it's going to take <laughs> a yeah. while for the orange uh, tree to grow. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, so good. Thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate your wisdom even concerning our food. And we will have to have you back on just to talk about that. So. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I would love to. And then I have all my oils laid out. So <laughs> yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah I, I actually do videos um, for that too. I, I have people, anytime I put up a video, I'll go live about different oils. If, you know, we're in flu season or allergy season, and then someone will inbox me and say, okay, well, I have a fungus. Or I have a boil. Or I have, you know, underarm you know, I'm sweating because there may be a praise dancer. And I'm like, okay, well, you have to, these are the things that you have to do. You want to stay, you know, fresh. You want to stay dry. Use this, use that. So I'm giving breakdowns of the things that they need to use. And then they'll inbox me. Oh my God, it really works. I, mean, yeah, it, I know. <laughs> so do you, which, which brand do you use? Young Living Oils. Young Living. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I, I know that I've used uh, oils to travel internationally and you travel a lot. So, yeah. Yeah. And I carry my thieves, my thieves. I spray everything down. I yeah. said, I said, all those times when y'all were looking at me crazy when I get on the flight and I'm spraying stuff down. I said, now all of a sudden everybody has everything now. I said, I've been doing it. <laughs> Cause we don't have any antibacterial uh, sanitizer anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> I use my thieves spray religiously. I've been using it probably for five years now. Yeah. Yep, everything. Yeah. That's yeah. the light. 100%. Yeah. 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 This, is this is good. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the Free to Be show and definitely going to have you back. Definitely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.